Yo guys, welcome back to another Dalmatian Memorial Freeze video. Okay, so today, I know it's very late. Uh, I was supposed to drop a video later than usual just to test out my upload times, but this has uh, turned out later than I wanted. Anyway, so we're going to go over some team building ideas and maybe what you guys can consider doing um, <clears throat> for Familiar Rush. Uh, I'm going to show you actually what teams I plan on using. This is obviously pre-Familiar Rush, so obviously some tweaking afterwards, doing some mock runs and things like that are going to be required. These are teams designed for each stage based on what we know on paper uh, and obviously have not been tested. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to... Uh, so first things first, we're going to look at the stage and then we're going to look at the team that I've put together for it. Now the whole point of this is that I obviously I know not everyone is going to have the optimal team to um, participate in every stage and some and that includes me I don't have like amazing wind units amazing earth units or anything like that so you've got to work with what you have and I'm gonna explain how that works across each stage with the exception of stage one I feel like basically everyone and their grandmother is gonna have a decent fire team so let's look at stage one to start off with now you'll see on the screen now now hold on let me just bring it over in front of me so because it's on the other monitor uh, you'll see on stage one here it's weak to <clears throat> it's got minus 30% fire resist and earth and wind resist up 40 which means they want you to use the uh, Elise that came in star freedom just get this light out of my face thank you probably not much better uh, they want you to use the Elise and you know Kaguya and the Elise we got prior to that so saying that right, I'm just gonna quickly break it since uh, fire is the weak point challenge them fire attribute units uh, like the flaming will Elise and also what's that? <coughs> iron my fat head is blocking the way <laughs> sorry let me shrink there we go much better uh, and these are not to scale. Okay, so Kaguya, and then basically it says here that it recommends using both Kaguya, uh, both the Elise and Kaguya on top of that. <coughs> uh, so given that it says that, and I feel like everyone will have a good um, fire team. Oh, um, sorry, <laughs> fumbling about across the monitors. Uh, this, I'm gonna show you my first party for now. Pull up, let's have a look. Let's, uh, pull up. <coughs> this is the team that I have put together for me in on in theory to use for stage one. Now, uh, I'm gonna explain the team real quick. Uh, Magic Alice. Uh, I haven't finished the banner yet. I'm hoping to get a couple more bonds of her before Familiar Rush is over. <coughs> but uh, Magic Alice. Uh, for the 30% increase in AoE damage, you know, plus she has Dragon Killer, which means she it instantly gets an additional 50% damage on top of that. Kage for the uh, physical resist debuff, as well as the fact that she has additional attacks for AoE. She's AoE designed and AoE specific. Uh, and then the physical release, because she's just a beast. Uh, <laughs> she has a super modifier on her AoE, all of their good stuff. Uh, the assists, Finn, I put Finn on the magical release because he provides, well, actually... I spent a very long time today in Discord calls with uh, familiar members and my friend Siggy and Tiberion and uh, basically Siggy educated me in the fact that I had put uh, the wrong assist on my Elise where Finn would actually provide better base stats. Anyway, so uh, Finn's there for the base stats um, <clears throat> as well as everything else he provides. Uh, Kaguya, I could probably... Kagi is there for the 20% uh, magic and physical attack, obviously. Uh, it, I might test it out and try to swap them around and give the Freya to the magic Elise if survivability becomes an issue. The outside of Rario Eyes, obviously for the 15% uh, strength as well as the 10% additional single target and AoE damage. I, there is nowhere in this team for me to replace that with Kagiya, unfortunately. Uh, then we have the Aries for the fit minus 15% physical resist. Um, sadly, I don't have any magic resist debuffers. I probably should try and look at that. Maybe put, bring Orna back in instead or even the Seer. I think Orna would probably be preferred. <coughs> uh, Lina, you know, for the SA gauge charge. And then Lyra is here for the 35% uh, magic resist debuff. 
uh, on her I have Apollo for the further fire resist debuff and then Haruhime has a Festus on there for the 15% magic as well as the 10% fire buff <laughs> and this is my stage 1 team now you guys probably may not have all of these units you, uh, you'll notice that I don't have this magic release is not MLB and I'm not wailing for part 3 I just don't feel as excited about these banners as I did for the part 1 banners or <coughs> even retro you know even looking back i think part two banners maybe were a bit more interesting for me as well the only unit i units i say look really hype like anniversary worthy would be the magic Elise and the otar one that would be it and even then it doesn't it's been the advent anniversary sort of dwindle uh dwindling for me in terms of energy levels <coughs> so if you can't replicate this team, it, you know, I'm pretty sure you have the Fire Bros being Argonaut and Crozo. They work as well. Argonaut is a supplement for Kaguya. Um, uh, sorry, Crozo is a supplement for Kaguya. I think I said Argonaut. Um, and Argonaut would be a supplement for the physical release. Unfortunately, Magic Elise <coughs> really doesn't have a supplement in terms of fire right now. Not for AoE anyway just bringing the 30% additional AoE damage is a real help like it really brings the fire element together in terms of um, like AoE context but that is my part one team um, keep in mind it is AoE it is the stage one so it's going to be the easiest out of the lot what could I do better uh, if we have another look at stage one it says here that it has uh, strength and magic decreasing skills I could probably try and find a way maybe to bring in <clears throat> a unit that removes strength and magic debuffs but I really don't see there being any flexibility in this team build for that um, but yeah that is stage one so we're gonna move on to stage two now let's have a quick look at the actual uh, stage itself uh, is this stage two was I clicking on stage two? Oh, no. okay so stage two it is a, ugh, stage two is earth elemental attacks unleashes stuns at a certain rate and increases its physical resist and magic resist okay without even reading any of the text right here they want you to bring finn uh because finn removes all uh resistance buffs with um the exception of single target and aoe resistance damage excuse me no okay right <laughs> just had to check that message uh so yeah they want you to bring the finn <coughs> Um, given that, if you go on past experience like the previous Familiar Rush where stage 2, sorry, let me just put my phone on silent, shall we? Um, if, if they, if you go based on the previous Familiar Rush, uh, it, stage 2 stuns twice, I think, in intervals. I think it was either stage, uh, turn 2 or 3 and turns 5 or 6. And in saying that, so let's read it. Unwavering Spear, Finn and Ryu have the Wind Attributes and Dragon Killer are recommended. Enemies only use physical attacks, so you can use Shakti to raise physical resistances. Uh, and all of your allies to fight steadily. There, are possible, there, is, there is a possibility of being inflicted by stun to so use uh, Devoted Hand Seer. Yeah, so basically they're telling you to use Seer anyway. Um, hmm. It's just about finding out what turn they do it on. If they do it on turn 3, you can get away with putting C on your final revolver. If turn 2, you probably put it on one of your sack units and put an anklet on your revolver. Excuse me, I managed to mute my microphone there, just in time. Um, that was, that tickle had been there for ages. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, mock it first, obviously, uh, depending on what turn they do. Uh, stun. It depends on who you put the seer on if you have her if not it's gonna be stun and clits uh, unfortunately <clears throat> if you do have the seer and you can and you get the turns down uh, in the earlier stages you probably can get away with not even using any armor if you have like high uh, MLB level units if you've got lower MLB units um, I would recommend earth cloaks if you don't have to run anklets <clears throat> but let's uh, close this and now let's look this I'm clicking on the wrong thing, like a more. <laughs> uh, let's look at my stage two team. <clears throat> okay, similar team as before. And now, don't get me wrong. 
I understand, uh, bring it back up. <laughs> I understand that it has a 50% resistance to fire. But I'm pretty sure um, that fire is still going to reign supreme in these stages. Especially considering one unit has Dragon Killer. So that instantly nullifies the 50% fire resistance by gaining back that 50% increase in damage from Dragon Killer. <clears throat> and then if you include the uh, minus 50%, 40% fire resistance from this at least, as well as the minus 35% physical resistance from the Kaguya, you're already back in negatives anyway. So this is for those people that do not have uh, amazing wind units. You're going to need Finn or someone that removes buffs in general. So uh, I don't want to recommend Winter Haruhime because you sacrifice too much damage. But Finn, I think it's the Dark or the Water Lily. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, she also removes resistance buffs. Oh, sorry, not removes them. Lowers the amount of turns they last for. <coughs> um, but yeah, so... Uh, but as you can see, I've, I've just gone and guessed that... It might be turn 2 where the stone's coming from, so Seer is on the Line. Uh, other than that, it's literally just a rearranged version of the previous team that I brought out to you guys. And um, I do have a couple of bonds for Finn, but I haven't leveled him yet, <laughs> so I'm being really lazy. Uh, other than that, you can pretty much decipher the team yourself. If you are not comfortable running... Uh, sorry, let me... I've saying all that and I've still got the team up. Okay, so you can probably decipher the team for yourself as to how it works. Like I said, I've got Seer on the first sack just in case they stun for turn two. If I'm wrong, I will swap Seer with the Hephaestus, <coughs> the Hephaestus, sorry. Because um, it'll either be turn two or turn three. I doubt it'll be turn one. If it is turn one, then it stays on the lean neighbor regard. But in saying that, uh, sorry, I did have to make a quick cut right there, guys. But in saying that, yeah, so if it's turn one, Seer stays on uh, Line regardless. Um, <clears throat> I am aware that it has been a green screen malfunction on my glasses <laughs> this whole time. I am sorry about that. I'll fix it for next video. Um, but yeah, you can see how the team works. You can see how it operates. Finn has to be there to remove the buffs anyway. Um... Other than that, if you're not comfortable running this fire team, you can, by all means, uh, whoever your most uh, well-synced element would be. Uh, if we bring up the stage again, we'll see who it is. Uh, fun with the exception of Thunder, uh, whatever your, uh, if you've got a good AOE Earth, Water, Dark, or even a Light team. Uh, and when I say uh, <laughs> a good one of those things i mean you have like the type redu uh, reduction like the physical resist reduction magic resist reduction element reduction and then element buffs and they mesh together just as well as all these fire units do then you can bring them by all means this is just a template to work from um like as you can see whatever element assists that i'm bringing replace those with the uh you know element that you're bringing whatever element units i'm bringing that buff or debuff that element or physical resist replace them with the ones of the element that you're using uh, and that will help you immensely it's just the only core unit that you kind of need to bring is the fin and there's no re there's not really much getting around that unfortunately and uh i don't want to spend too much time on this stage because obviously i don't want this video to drag on for too long but we're going to move on to stage three now i'm going to bring up the slide here as you can see uh single target it's just like record buster going to be weak to earth um Unleashes current HP attack. Now, the thing is, if they fixed Otal, which they said they did, this is basically your Otal counters. If it does say 60% of your current HP, Otal's at full HP, and then counters after having 60% of his total, like his HP removed, it should hurt. You know, that like this is designed for Otal, that's what it is. Uh, with a strength and magic decreasing skill, again, it's going to suck. I do not have anyone that removes. Um, in the team that I currently have templated, I have yet to find someone that will mesh well to remove those debuffs. Otol himself uh, basically makes it so the uh, increase of her of it of the dragon's uh, guard rate is null and void. But it, he has a 50% guard rate reduction on his skill too. Anyway, so I've just quickly read this. Um, <clears throat> challenge it with Otol. You can single attacks. Um, Asfi. Asfi will increase 
non-MLB will increase single target damage to 15% over the usual 10. Do the math, it's additive, uh, you know, so you can replace, if you gain an addition, like more elsewhere, it becomes redundant to try and get grab that 5% if you don't need it. Um, okay, nothing overly informative here, so uh, minus 30% earth, minus 20% physical, uh, so they do not want you to try and cheese with the uh, magic nukas as usual, um, so we'll close this and then we'll bring up my team, uh, let's call it in shall we? Okay, this is my team for stage 3. I know what you're thinking, what? <laughs> uh, so I, <clears throat> the only unit I have that is going to be exceptional on stage 3 is Otal. Other than that, I have two very self-sufficient, very self-sustaining, very good dark units that are great for single target uh, environments anyway. Um, it's not common to run both Otals at the same time, so I've been told. Um, but that's what I'm going to go for. This is, remember, this is on theory. This hasn't been, even been tested yet. This is just what I'm going to try and run for each stage for now. Uh, <clears throat> as you can see, all of the assists are basically focusing on getting as much damage out as possible. Uh, Take, outside of Rario Eyes, Freya, all um, strength increasing assists for damage dealers. Uh, I am going to be. I have yet to decide what the correct, I mean, I'll probably just, won't even, in terms of turn rotation, I will have to mock to see whether it's worth even SAing with Goblin Slayer at all to increase his dark damage to 90%, or whether it's just, I mean, it's probably just better to SA with Otal every time, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> so, how do I explain this team? It's Otal damage, Goblin Slayer damage as well as the increase I decrease in physical and dark resist Lina for the SA gauge <coughs> Winter Hestia, sorry about clearing my throat uh, Winter Hestia for the earth damage increase by 10% uh, Otal, you know what Otal does, he decreases physical, uh, physical resist and earth resist increases his own earth and strength damage lowers guard rate, he, he is an all in one I'm gonna destroy you nuke uh, Elise is there as a revolver for the 30% increased crit and penetration rate. Like I said, we just want to increase damage as much as possible. And then obviously Haruhime is there for the uh, buff extension, the SA and Orna is on her for the physical resist and magic resist debuff. Um, and then, oh, sorry, I skimmed over the wedding dress seer. Wedding dress seer, if you, like I said, damage and damage reduction is all additive. So you, where we see 5% minus 5% uh, dark resist and increase 10% dark damage overall that is an increase in 15% uh, dark damage <clears throat> well and truly worth it um, like I said I unfortunately do not have anyone that would fit in this team that will remove strength and magic debuffs which is why we've opted for the over the top just increase damage as much as possible but this is the team I'm going with like I said it doesn't have to be dark if you have a self-sustaining element so um, <clears throat> every other element is pretty much neutral on this stage uh, I believe if we go back and have another look <sighs> yeah it's just magic that they don't want you to use so you can even bring Anya could you could bring fire and bring Katori you know those single target nuke uh, SA users that are designed for Rekobasa any of them will work here in pairing with Otal uh, a lot of people are probably going to opt for Katori because, like I said, fire seems to be the most synchronized element across the board. Uh, but those are my three teams. I hope they make you understand uh, or help you out or give you an idea of where to start from in terms of making a team if you have just joined the game or if you've just joined a familiar or it's a new familiar. Or, you know, anyone that needed a little bit of help with this, I hope this helps. Make sure to drop a like. If you did enjoy the video, subscribe. If you're not, make sure to follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. And as always, guys, I'll catch you later.